With the rise of the jet engine, attacking aircraft were increasingly able to fly at much higher altitudes and at much greater speeds. The conventional method of air defense, the anti-aircraft artillery or AAA, weren't able to keep up. Most AAA has a maximum effective ceiling of around 9,000 meters, or 30,000 feet, and it would take a shell over 30 seconds to reach that altitude. By that time, an aircraft would have traveled a few kilometers from when the shell was fired. A new solution was needed. Today, the anti-aircraft artillery has been replaced with the surface-to-air missile, with AAA being mostly limited to short-range roles. There is a surface-to-air missile for every occasion, short-range, medium-range, and long-range against aircraft and cruise missiles, and a whole other set of short, medium, and long-range defenses against different types of ballistic missiles. This video is restricted to those land-based systems used to defend against aircraft and cruise missiles. If you would like to see a video on ballistic missile defense, I have a few which I've made which are listed in the description. Russia, and by the extension of the Soviet Union, has made air defense a major priority. After facing massive scale bombings at the hands of the Germans during World War II, and the growing threat from America's long-range bombers after the war, Russia decided they needed a system which can defend against these threats. The first system deployed was the S-25 in 1955. The S-25 was quickly set up in two rings surrounding Moscow. The system was followed up by the S-75, the S-125, the S-200, S-300, and finally the S-400, each one being a major improvement over the previous system. Today, Russia has a vast, highly mobile, layered air defense system protecting its major cities and military installations. The system utilized for long-range defense is the S-300 and the S-400. There are currently around 60 fixed sites spread across the country protecting important locations like St. Petersburg, Moscow, Severomorsk, and Vladivostok. These systems are highly mobile, meaning that in the event of war, they can be relocated, set up, and ready to fire very quickly. The S-300 has gone through numerous upgrades over the years, improving both the missiles it fires and the radars which guide them. They use two types of radars, a search or surveillance radar, which searches for possible threats, and a tracking or engagement radar, which will provide precise targeting information to the missile to guide it to its target. This combination allows the system to engage several targets at once, while simultaneously searching for more targets. For medium-range defense, Russia utilizes the 9K37 Buke. Russia currently has over 400 Buke launchers. These systems are typically not stationed in fixed locations like the S-300 and 400, but can be rapidly deployed to any area due to their high mobility. Depending on the variant of the missile used and the type of the target, the system has a maximum range of around 20 to 40 kilometers. And finally, for short range and point defense, Russia uses a few different systems. These include TOR, a short to medium range mobile surface to air missile system, the Tunguska, which carries a mix of both guns and missiles designed to shoot down low flying aircraft and missiles, OSA, another highly mobile short range missile system, and several man pads, or man portable air defense systems like Strela and Igla. The US also turned its attention to surface to air missile defense after the end of World War II. The first system operational was the Nike Ajax in 1954, making it the first operational surface to air missile system in the world. Ajax was widely deployed throughout the United States, defending major cities and military installations. Nike Ajax was eventually replaced with Nike Hercules, which was much more capable but deployed in fewer numbers. Hercules was slowly phased out over the 60s and 70s, which left the US with no fixed surface to air missile systems. Today, the US military uses the Patriot as its main medium and long range surface to air missile system. The Patriot was first deployed in the early 1980s. It has since gone through numerous upgrades. The system is often compared with the S300 as it has many of the same characteristics. However, instead of the two radars the S-300 uses, the Patriot combines both the search and tracking radar into one. Like the S-300, the Patriot is a highly capable system, although it does have some limitations. One of the main drawbacks of the Patriot is that each launcher is limited in the area that it can cover due to its slanted launch position, compared to the full 360 degree coverage of the S-300 due to its vertical launch position. As far as short range, over the years the US has decommissioned many air defense systems, including the Chaparral and the medium range Hawk, leaving them with only the Stinger missile and the Patriot for air defense. The Stinger is a man pad, but it is also mounted on several vehicles like the Avenger air defense system and the M6 linebacker, a variant of the Bradley fighting vehicle. The US has virtually no active surface to air missile defense systems on duty in the US. 
the exception being three slam ram sites guarding Washington DC. The slam ram is a surface to air missile which uses a variant of the AMRAM air to air missile. They do however have numerous Patriot batteries which could be deployed in the event of a war. America's overseas bases are a different story. Patriot batteries can easily be seen in imagery of US bases in Japan and South Korea for example as they are much closer to potentially hostile nations. So why is there such a gap between US and Russian surface to air missile deployments? How can the US spend nearly 10 times more on defense yet be so far behind Russia in this aspect? It comes down to a fundamental difference in air defense doctrine. Instead of relying on surface to air missiles, the US uses its vast number of fighter aircraft to defend its territory and forces. The use of aircraft instead of ground based missile sites offers much more flexibility. Surface to air missile sites are vulnerable to cruise missile strikes. With the growing number of standoff range missiles, strike aircraft can simply launch an attack while staying out of the range of the SAM site. The sites are also nowhere near as mobile as an attacking aircraft, so a strike aircraft can attack from an advantageous position, or sometime completely avoid the SAM site altogether by flying around them. Whereas using fighter aircraft to intercept enemy aircraft gives you much more flexibility, longer range, and also better radar coverage as airborne radars are not as limited by the horizon as ground-based radars. As for defending the homeland, the US is half a world away from any nation it could consider potentially hostile. Therefore, the threat from enemy bombers and strike aircraft is significantly lower than Russia, who is nearly surrounded by US allies. The US's large defense budget means they also have many more aircraft which can defend their territory. The US currently operates over 2,500 fighter and multi-role aircraft between the Air Force, Navy, and the Marines. This is compared to just under 700 aircraft between Russia's Air Force and Navy. On top of that, being the largest country in the world, Russia has much more territory to cover. However, there are several downsides to using interceptor aircraft, the largest of which is the cost. You need many more aircraft, each costing tens of millions of dollars. You need pilots to fly them, which can cost several million dollars each to train. You need numerous air bases and ground crews to launch them, which can cost hundreds of millions of dollars each tanker aircraft to keep them airborne longer, and more pilots to fly them, and the cost of the air-to-air -air missiles which the aircraft needs to use. Surface-to-air missile systems offer up a good defense against aerial threats, and at a much lower cost. But the mobility and flexibility that comes with using interceptor aircraft overall offers a greater defense, however at a much, much higher price. As a side note, I just started a Discord server. It's a place to discuss war-related topics, current events, and any suggestions and comments for the Covert Cabal YouTube page. If you want to get a hold of me, that's the best place to do it. The link is in the description.